Well, Kelly's court is back in session on the docket today. The case of these three Ohio women who were kept hostage inside a home in Cleveland for three years, sorry, 10 years, and are now free. Two of them were snatched when they were just teenagers. The third, we believe, was about 20 years old. Their alleged captors, three brothers, are now in custody and facing charges. In fact, we could hear those charges any moment now. Could others have known, however, about their alleged crimes? Could this have been done without others knowing? And about the horrific imprisonment of these women? Joining me now to discuss it, Fox News legal analyst Mercedes Colwin and former prosecutor Faith Jenkins. So I have a lot I want to get through with you. And that is first, let me ask you as a former prosecutor, Faith, what charges you think we're likely to see brought at least initially against these three? Initially, uh, I think you're going to see multiple counts of kidnapping. And under these facts, Megan, it's going to be a felony in the first degree. So felony in the first degree kidnapping for these guys. In addition to that, it appears that there's going to be some sexual assault charges. Even if it's not initially filed in the initial complaint, I think as the investigation goes forward, uh, based on what we're hearing, it's likely that uh, these, these women were sexually assaulted over the course of these years. Yeah. Uh, and, and, given, and given that, okay, just let's just start with that, and I'll stick with you on this, Faith. Uh, kidnapping at least three counts and rape it would it would be multiple counts I mean, right. every time every time absolutely uh, it would count there, there if all three of them were involved in that are all three of these looking at life in prison absolutely I mean and here you're looking at a minimum of 15 years in prison maximum of life in prison but I think in a case like this you're going to look at a sentences that will run consecutively which is one after the other so even if a prosecutor were to offer some kind of deal um, for the simple fact of not making these women have to testify in a court of law uh, against these guys yeah. you're still looking at consecutive sentences and I don't think any of these guys will see the light of day again if the fact uh, continue to come out as they have been today about this case. What about now? We're, it, it was Ariel Castro's home, and he right. appears to be the main guy. But the brothers are also under arrest, Mercedes. Sure. I don't know exactly what their role is, but you know, I think we are all making some assumptions. Right. So you've got those two family members, and then other family. I mean, is it possible these women were in there for ten years, and no other family members knew? How odd it would be. In fact, Ariel Castro's son interviewed the mother of one of the of the captives interviewed her and wrote a paper on it because he was a journalism major in college. So how is it that this son, apparently there's De Jesus, the, one of the captives, De Jesus, and Ariel Castro were family friends. Mm -hmm. And so he, the son, actually went and spoke to the mother of De Jesus so I, and interviewed but, but her. But he was so in college at the odd. time, and I don't know that he was living with Ariel Castro or had right. a relationship with him even then. So I don't know about that son, but I do want to ask this. If they can prove a family member or a friend had knowledge yes. of the girls in that basement, mm -hmm. the women, uh, they became women over the course, could they be charged, Mercedes? Absolutely. Aiders and abettors. I mean, they're the ones that allowed this. They knew of the crime. They may have assisted in the crime. Aiders and abettors. And they can be charged equally with the same charges that the Castro okay. brothers are facing. I want to ask you now, there is a, an NBC local news report that at least five pregnancies occurred. And the way oh, it's described is that, that the babies did not survive. Now, what does that mean? Babies were born alive if they were? Could there be murder charges in this case? That's next. Stay with me. All right, so again, this is a local NBC news report from the area citing, quote, several police forces, uh, sources, who say that, they, that up to five pregnancies resulted during this time frame, and yet we only have one baby uh, who's now six years old. And so my question to you, Faith, and they're saying it is unclear what happened following those pregnancies. If we had babies born alive mm -hmm. that, that were harmed, I mean, you're looking at possible murder charges, are you not? Right. I mean, as a prosecutor in this case, Megan, I would be so aggressive. I would pursue felony murder charges. If these babies were born alive and then died, they did so while, these, while this individual or these individuals were in the commission of a felony, which is rape and kidnapping. So those were the charges that I would pursue. I mean, in a case like this, you're, you're so happy that these, that these girls are back with their families, but justice can never really be done. But That's as a right. prosecutor, you want to absolutely be as a aggressive as you can. Right. You can't give them right. their 10 years back, can't give exactly. them their childhood, their freedom, their peace of mind, their mental health. Mercedes, my last question for you. Sure. How do you defend against these charges if you're the defense attorney? Keep this me these men alive is really what it is. I mean, you can't possibly for say, well, they were insane. You can't be insane for 10 years. This is not some suddenly that came up and that hatched. 
this is something we're just going to try to keep you alive. And, Why can't you be insane for 10 years? Why yeah. can't they go in there and say they're crazy, they, it, runs, it runs in the family? Well, you know, they, they can try, but it'll be left out of court. Only 2% of these insane type defenses are actually su successful, 2%. So to, to have something like this, to come forward, I mean, I've seen cases where they'll come forward and say, hey, by the way, there was consent involved. Consent, really? These people were tied down. Mm -hmm. How could there possibly be consent for rape? Mm -hmm. How can they possibly have allowed themselves to be treated like animals for 10 years because somehow they consented to this relationship? Last These question, the kind of crazy very last question, Faith, and I'm up against a heartbreak. Do you think they'll strike a deal to spare the women the, the pain of testifying? I think it's possible, but I don't think there'll be a deal if if uh, these men would somehow be uh, subjected to in doing anything less than life in prison. Yeah, that's right. Spare their lives and we'll see. Uh, panel, Thanks. thank you so much. We'll be right back. Thanks,